Some of the first ballots for Kamala Harris and Donald Trump are being cast right now as early in-person voting is officially underway in Virginia, Minnesota, and South Dakota. And while Virginia and Minnesota are reliably Democratic and South Dakota very Republican, this comes at a particularly fraught time with both sides preparing now for what is expected to be a contested post-election. NBC's Ryan Nobles is live at a polling place in Virginia. Uh, talk about what you're seeing there today, Ryan. Yeah, Chris, we've been to two different polling locations in the Commonwealth of Virginia, Prince William County, where we are right now, in Fairfax County, Virginia, two consequential counties, and the enthusiasm levels are off the charts. We've seen long lines, people anxious to cast their ballot 45 days before the first day of election. And in what has been a bit of a change from previous years, it's not just Democrats voting early, it's Republicans as well. Take a listen. We want to make sure that we're able to do it. I mean, we don't know what the future holds, so we, we were able and ready. It felt great, and we normally vote early. They've got it all set up pretty quick. Walk in, mark your ballot. Well, I prefer voting on uh, Election Day in November. Sorry, but I was raised that way. And in addition to all the activity we're seeing at polling locations, we're also seeing the parties make a specific pitch to their voters to get out and vote as soon as possible. This is an example. This is a Democratic uh, event that's taking place in Manassas, very close to one of their early voting locations. And we see Democrats making a specific pitch to get their voters to the polls. In fact, we're going to talk quick here with Senator Mark Warner about this effort. Uh, Senator, Virginia, one of the earliest states in the country Absolutely. to start voting. How important is it for Democrats to get their voters to their polls? even well before election day. You know, get out, vote early. You're seeing huge energy, not just here in Manassas, but across the whole Commonwealth. You know, Ryan, in Virginia, we say each year, because we have an election every year, we say this is the most important year. This year, we're telling the truth. This is the most important election of our lifetime. All right. Senator Warner, thank you so much thank for that. You, Ryan. And we'll continue to see this all day long. In fact, Virginia, uh, these different counties, they'll have multiple uh, early voting locations that will open as we get closer and closer to Election Day. They expect at least half of the voters in Virginia to vote before Election Day. Chris, we'll send it back Ryan to you. Ryan Nobles, thank you so much for that. Joining me now, Steve Simon, Secretary of State for Minnesota and President of the National Association of Secretaries of State. Uh, it's so good to see you. And you said in an interview that this year you're hoping for high turnout and low drama. Uh, what are the chances of that? Yeah, if I could wave a magic wand, those are my two wishes. You know, I'm actually uh, cautiously optimistic. I think we've learned a lot from 2020, particularly about the drama part. We've learned a lot from a security standpoint. We've learned a lot from just the rhythm of the system standpoint. So I, I remain an optimist about all that. So we have been reporting on election offices being mailed suspicious uh, envelopes, white powder, those kinds of things that some states uh, are installing panic buttons for their workers, which brings me to the question, are you worried at all right now about states being able and your state being able to recruit enough people, first of all, to actually run the election? We know that some people have said who have done it in the past, they just they're afraid. Yeah, and I can understand that because you read some of these reports, no one wants to face harassment or threats or intimidation just for doing this kind of civic duty. Speaking only for myself in Minnesota, it takes 30,000 people to be poll workers. 30,000 people have to step up and do that job. But look, in our state and in most states, there are good laws on the books that ought to ensure a tranquil experience that ought to ensure some stability and an orderly process. Things like restrictions on who can be in a polling place, things like restrictions on what people can say or do when they're in a polling place, including challengers, people who are challenging people's eligibility. So I'm confident that uh, with the experience we've had from past elections and with the good laws that we have on the books, not just in Minnesota, but in many states, we can contain that problem. What I'm more concerned about, frankly, is the other 364 days of the year. The elections administrators, not necessarily on game day, but the other days of the year who help run the show and run the election system, they continue to be targets. And we've got to we've got to get our arms around that as well. Well, I mean, I can't imagine a more challenging time to be president of the Association of Secretaries of State. So good on you for that. But I know you're in touch with folks elsewhere. And I, I wonder what it is that keeps you, that keeps them up at night as you look ahead to the election and the days following and the vote count. 
Well, I think, while not wanting to speak for any other particular secretary, my observation is that every secretary wants the same thing. They want an election that is trouble-free. They want an election where people can go about their business, they can vote without fear of any sort of intimidation, or harassment, and that sort of thing. They want access, and they want security. And I think all of us in this community, secretaries of state, but folks at the local level as well, we are really um, having each other's backs, as we must. We don't always agree on every policy nuance or detail, but we have to have each other's backs. We're all in the democracy business. But and what does that mean as a days, practical matter, Mr. Secretary? Does yeah. it mean that most people who go to vote in your state and others might see a, a larger police presence or security presence? What, what should people know about, frankly, just plain old security? Yeah, plain old security, they should know that there's been a ton of communication and planning up, down, and sideways. So with federal partners like the Department of Homeland Security and the FBI and in Minnesota and other states with our local law enforcement and folks at the county and city level, we're ready for this. And not just on Election Day, things like the Electoral College. December 17th is when any, every state, Minnesota and every state, will convene the Electoral College. We don't want that to be a focal point or some sort of target for any you know planned disruption. So... From the beginning to the end of the process, we really, from the standpoint of physical security, are on it. Now, how that will play out in different states is different. Minnesota law is different as to other states in terms of what you can do on game day with law enforcement present at the polling place. What I do know is that in every single state, without exception, law enforcement can at some point and will, if need be, be called to a polling place if there is disruption, if there is the uh, prospect that a voter will be harassed or threatened or intimidated. In some states, you can post them preemptively at the polling place. In other states like Minnesota, you can't do that, but they are on a moment's notice ready to come to a polling place if the need arises. Let me ask you, finally, you were among the state officials who signed on to a letter raising concerns about the ability of the U.S. Postal Service to handle all yep. the mail-in ballots this election season. You just heard in Virginia they think they'll get half of people voting early. Have you received any reassurance from the Postmaster General since then? Yes, we have, and I think they're taking the, the, the uh, challenges seriously. And what we've said to them is, look, we got 46 days. We need your assurances that there will be resources in play, there will be extra training and emphasis in play, and that you'll give us and the states advice about what to do in our own particular states. The difference between a letter being a day late can be the difference between a voter's vote counting and not counting, depending on what state you're in. So I think they understand the gravity. Now they've just got to do what they have done in the past, including the COVID election of 2020, which is redouble their efforts, making sure they're spotting that elections related mail, making sure they're giving it priority over the other kinds of mail. And those are the assurances we're seeking. They've been saying some of the right things. We just want to see the action. I expect it. I think we'll see it.